and this is for phot photographers welcome everybody who's uh, joining into this and watching this later or watching this live this is for photographers a budget build for photographers and what would be the setup i've got one setup uh, sent across to me so we're going to look at that in a moment now i'm going to read that up for you in a moment and then we're going to have a look um, what we can do about that so um let me see can i da, 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 how can i okay let me see if i can Okay, we'll get that. How can I get this message up on the top? So there it is. One second, everybody. I am a bit quiet. Okay. Um, let me have a look at the levels. Um. Um, ba, ba, ba. Okay. Here. Okay, there we go. Let me put this on like that, so you guys can see this as well. Um. Uh, th 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 let me see if there's anything that I don't have to. Do, do, do. Okay, let me get you guys here on the comments so I can. I can I can hide that type of thing. Perfect. Okay. And transition. So we've got a message over here. Um anything treat. He's saying, hi there. Um I'm planning to build a uh I'm planning to build uh a PC based on one of the best bank content creator systems. Uh, but I never built it before. With the GPU shortage and my motherboard needs, I'm getting a lot lost. Um, can we check it out? Okay, and of course, I've got a setup coming up over here. So let's open that up. He's got his saved parts over here, and we're going to go bit by bit through this. But before we're going to do that, I think it's important that we're going to see uh, what his workflow is, what does he use it for, because that will put everything, all the parts, everything will put in context. By the way, let me know what you're drinking right now, if you're drinking anything. A good cup of tea is uh, what we do here in England. So, um, let me have a look. He's saying that he's editing on a MacBook, sorry, editing on a laptop. And he's saying that uh, the other option is to get a Mac Mini, the new M1, I'm hoping. But I don't know if the basic model is good enough and I don't like the fact that, fact that I can't upgrade. In most cases, the Mac Mini would be okay, but there is a big problem of storage and nothing, you know, you'll stuck with it. But in what I'm going to show you and what we'll be doing is I'll show you a system that is absolutely uh, best bang for buck, right? You're going to get a lot more performance than the Mac Mini. Uh, you're going to get much more upgradability. Um, it's, I think, personally, it's much better system. Um, Another thing I want to mention that if you are looking to get one of those uh, systems or one of those things, then the actual links for this are in the description. If you want to check it out, all the links uh, for this build are in the description below. So if you pick them up, they are affiliate links. So if you use them, massively, massively appreciate that. Uh, they don't come to you at any extra cost, but that just keeps me uh, doing my job here and keep uh, helping you guys build better PCs and save you more money. So let me get that description out of the way now. Okay. So uh, what is another thing here? He's saying that, uh, okay, there's two SSDs in there, uh, planning to keep the OS and programs and then using another SSD for a scratch disk. And then there is storage along some external drives. Okay, the drive fans, okay, he's saying about his workflow, I asked about his workflow because then that would kind of make sense. Uh, so he's doing a lot of um, basically Lightroom editing, uh, pulls them straight to Lightroom, then he's got some storage on external hard drives, he's got, uh, he's doing some Photoshop, 
So that is absolutely perfect. Now, let's start looking at the setup one by one. Now, first of all, he's uh, picked a CPU, AMD Ryzen. First of all, I've got to give him um, some extra points. He's uh, learned some from uh, my videos uh, because I think going right now with the AMD system is much better because even if you build the budget system, the upgradability option is just unbelievable what you can do with, uh, with that because the upgrades you can do on AMD platform, there's so much you can go for. So going with AMD processor, that is a good choice. Now, he specific needs Lightroom and Photoshop. This processor isn't necessarily best bank for buck. For the same amount, 320 pounds or something like that, what I would recommend getting is let me get that a little bit smaller so I can see what's happening here. Okay, yeah, something like that. So for about 50, uh, two, 300 and, do you know what? I can't do that because I need to do this. Amazon, Amazon. And I'll show you some of the uh, parts then, what we're going to do, is this Ryzen 5600X. Now, it might be a little bit more expensive here on Amazon, £354, but you can easily get that uh, cheaper in any of the other places for the same amount of price. And why this processor is better than this uh, 3800X is because the single core is much better. Now, this six core, I know it looks less cores, but it's actually better in those applications. So in Lightroom and Photoshop, the active tasks of like actually, you know, either selecting through photos or culling photos or putting uh, your presets on, you know, with a brush editing with that or any active editing you do on a photo, that is much better with this processor. Now. Let's put it in perspective. This processor is as good or even better in these programs than the Intel 10900K, which is like almost twice the price processor. This is a 10 core processor. Um, you've got uh, about 500 pounds for this processor. But the thing is, it is much better uh, than Sorry, the Ryzen 5600X is much better than this one. Sorry, kind of brain freeze over there in a moment. So I think for budget build, this is a perfect place to upgrade. And because you're not doing any anything else, uh, the thing is you don't need any more cores. If you're doing any light video editing in 1080p on 4K, it's absolutely fine processor. You, you'll be absolutely fine. This is a fantastic processor for doing that. And you're not breaking your bank. You have few upgrade options to go for, you know, 5900X, 5950X, but, you know, if you need that. But for photographers, this is like right on the top there as anything else. And whatever upgrade you do, you're not going to get any much more. You know, it kind of would make sense. So this is like the perfect option of um, the CPU to get. Let me get this um, up here as well so we can... Go backwards and forwards over here. So for processor, I would go with that list. The link for that processor is in the description below. Let me see if if that. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. I'll take this off so you guys can see this. Um. So this is uh the links for this processor or my setup. Everything I'm recommending is in the description below. Um, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is motherboard. Now he mentioned that he does want Wi-Fi for the motherboard. So what he has chosen here is not a bad option actually. This MSI B450, it, it's, it's a great board. It looks good, you know, you've it's 119 pounds. It's fine. It's got Wi-Fi in, it's got two M.2 slots, but they are PCIe 3.0, both of them. Now. Here's what I would recommend. If you go with, uh, let me see if it comes 
up here b550 motherboard and why you should go with b550 let me see where are we where are we where are we where is our b550 oh there's another one uh but that's not the one i recommended oh there it is look at this this motherboard here why I think you should go with B550 is, first of all, you're saving about 10 quid and you're actually getting better features or better specs. Here's the thing. When going with uh, the B450, your PCIe lanes, which means that little M.2 SSD, let me show you over here, that M M.2 SSD over there, that is uh, locked at PCIe 3.0 speed, which are plenty fast for a lot of people, right? Which is like, what, 3,400? megabytes per second something like that or around there but the PCA 4.0 is on this B550 board so this M.2 slot over here is actually lightning gen 4 which means PCA 4.0 which means you can do uh, and get a PCA 4.0 drive if you want to upgrade later or earlier it's absolutely fine and then get absolutely fantastic speeds over there now uh, another little tip over here is if you're going to get PCIe 3.0 M.2, so let me show you. Uh, another option is this board over here as well. They are both like roughly the same price, but both B550 board. I would personally go with MSI because um, I've used MSI before and it's just so easy to do the drivers and everything. Like afterwards, you've installed everything. Just go get like Dragon Center and poof, it just installs all the like, chipset drivers, everything. Poof, it's just easier as work is the same but i've just used msi and just like how it uh, works so if we go to nvme ssd right and then if you're gonna get a 3.0 drive for this motherboard um which is for example seven rocket here this is a great drive over here i've bought loads of them then i would recommend you using the second slot over here because that is linked to three pci 3.0 so later on if you upgrade and get a pci 4.0 drive you can put it over there and you get a really fast uh, project drive or really fast sorry if you hear any noise it's just my kids downstairs everyone's home in england Woohoo! But uh, then i would put it in that first slot because you don't want to put a 3.0 drive over there and then leave leave it open here for a, a PCIe 4.0 drive later, but then you're going to be uh, capped at three PCIe uh, uh, 4.0 drive, if that makes sense. So let me just kind of uh, say it again to uh, kind of conclude. The If you get a PCIe 3.0 drive, then put it on the bottom slot. If you get a PCIe 4.0 drive later or straight away, put it on the top slot because then you get the speeds. If that makes sense. So there is uh, a few PCA 4.0 drives available there. Um, we're going to look at that in a moment. But first of all, let's look at the RAM. He's chosen the RAM. So as you can see, we we're saving about 10 quid and we're getting better features over there. And it's got Wi-Fi built in as well, by the way, as you can see here. Boom, whatever you need. I know it doesn't look necessarily the nicest board, but hey, we just need work done. So it doesn't really matter uh, what we're actually doing over here. Um, so then next of all, we're going to look at the RAM. So what is the RAM you should be going for when going with this, uh, setup? Now he has chosen Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 32 gigabytes and it is 3200 megahertz. Now this is a perfect RAM if you go with this Ryzen system, right? But for Ryzen 5000 series processors, which we have chosen, the 5600X. They like to run a little bit faster on faster memory. So I would recommend trying to go for uh, 3600 megahertz. As you can see, DDR4 3200 megahertz. Not that one, but 3600 megahertz. Now, if you don't know which one do I mean, then you can easily go and, uh, you know, just... No, thanks. I agree. Thanks, YouTube. Tech notice. And we can see I'm live right now. Nope. No, thank you. Oh, see, Adobe Premiere Pro. They know that I'm talking about this. So they, they're listening to the thing. Uh, oh, I'm getting much more chats, but oh, there we go. 
Hello, everybody's tuning in there. So if you go in the bottom over here, you can see the RAM, I'll show you exactly. By the way, these are like smart links, so they should be taking you to the local Amazon everywhere. Um, so the RAM I really recommend you getting going with is this Clev Pult. Now this is budget RAM kit, right? Uh, they're not like coarse or anything, but they should be working very, very fine. What you're getting is 3600 megahertz DDR4 RAM, um, which is the speeds we want. And he mentioned that there is, um, a he's using a lot of Photoshop and Lightroom and multitasking loads of things at the same time, which means that it will be helpful to get loads of RAM. Now, you can easily start with 32 gigabytes here, and that is 145 pounds. Now let's have a look at here, and we're saving another 30 quid. Is it 30 quid, 70? No, 25 quid. 70 plus, uh, what is it, 45? 25 quid, 25 quid. Another little bit, do you know what? When you budget build, there is all these little bits, they add up. And this RAM is actually faster speeds than what he has chosen, um, and then it works um, you know faster and later on you can upgrade to 64 if you want to get two of these kits and you run out of run That's fine. But the thing is if you want to save even more money What what's the other option? I would then go with 32 gigabytes, but uh, 3200 megahertz as you can see you can save even more like 8 quid. There is not that much of a difference between uh, 3600 and 3200 as you can see over this one over here is only 8 quid cheaper and uh, it's not going to give you much more performance, but to gain like extra few percent performance with eight quid is very, very, very good. But there is some other options over here. No, this is a laptop memory. Uh, let's see. See this one here. This is 32 gigabytes and that's even more cheaper. Oloi should be fine. It's cheap memory, but it's fine. You can go Corsair, but look, you, you're paying quite more. So... Don't worry, you can go with these cheaper ones. That's completely fine. As long as it's DDR4 or 3200 megahertz, links for all of these are in the description below. So next of all, let's have a look what he has. So we have chosen the RAM. You know what RAM to get now. We've saved a little bit on the RAM. So let's move on to storage. Now, as I understand, he wants two of these uh, solid state drives and then one of those um, hard drives. Now, this uh, is a SATA drive, which means that the read and write speeds are roughly around 500 to 550 megabytes per second. If you get an NVMe drive, for example, this one over here, let's have a look, where is our... So NVMe, uh, M.2 500 gigabytes. Let's have a look what options do we have over here. Did I leave any SSDs in the description below? Oh, I forgot. Uh, I'll, I'll leave them as soon as I finish this live stream. I'll put them in the description below as well. But basically, the SSDs I would be going for is Saber Rocket over here is a fantastic drive. This is like super, super fast, ridiculously fast. Okay. And there is some budget options a little bit over here, but uh, for that 20 quid that we just saved, I'd probably spend it on this one and put the OS on this one because the speeds you're getting for um, the read and write speeds. Now, I've, I've got... Look, I've got two of these drives over here. Come on, focus. There we go. Two of these drives over here, 250 gigabytes. This is 512 gigabytes. And... Any time I'm doing a build, I'm almost always putting with this because never once have I had an issue with this. And the speeds I'm getting with these is ridiculous. For the, so it's like price to performance speed is uh, amazing. So let me just put it in perspective. That SSD that he has chosen was um, 550 megabytes per second. Look at this. The read speed is 3 thousand four hundred megabytes per second it's almost well it's six times the speed is getting from that ssd and you're paying extra how much is it okay around 49 50 extra da, 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 15 
15 pounds? 15 pounds? I think it's worth getting six times the performance. That, that is what I would get. Now, let's have a look if there is any other options over here because I know that Team Group uh, has some awesome SSDs as well. Carillo 0Z340. And um, I can see some comments over here. Let me just see if... What are people saying over here? Uh, does this motherboard come with the AMD 5000 S uh, series CPU or do you have to do a BIOS update? Now, the Kaz Gaming Room, that is a very good question. And most likely you do have to do uh, a BIOS update for this. And here's a little tip how you can do that. The uh, one option is to get two CPUs from uh, Amazon, get one of these and then another one that you're gonna be returning later. And then just upgrade it and then you can send it back. Uh, other option is to ask for some of your friends, but most likely, you know, you don't have friends who just have CPUs lying around. So the best bet to do is just like buy another AMD like 5000 or 3000 series processor um, that is cheap. Let me show you which one you could get. So if you go AMD processor. Oops. And then just get another one of like, well, this one could do. It's 150 quid. Let's see if there's anything cheaper. Not the FX series. Make sure it's Ryzen processor. Uh, let's have a look. Ryzen. And then just return it later. But you can do a BIOS update while having this processor on. And then that would be a de um that's how you would do it. That's what I would do. That's what I've done. So, if you get one of those SSDs, let me see if there is a 500 gigabyte version of this available as well, because this is one terabyte. Nope. So go with the Sabrent Rocket. That is a, an, an awesome choice over there. If you want to ch save a little bit more, look, there is a Western Digital Blue. You're paying eight quid more, but hey, look at the speeds. We're getting read speeds of 2,400 megabytes per second. I think the write speed is around 500 megabytes per second or something like that. So the write speed isn't that great on this, but do you know what? You're still getting, for eight quid extra, you're getting uh, amazing, amazing performance over here. Oh no, look at that. Uh, you're getting about 2000 megabytes per second, so four times the speeds, uh, and then look, you're getting uh, for uh, extra eight, eight quid. So definitely go with, for OS drive, get like an NVMe drive like this one over here. It's super, super fast. Uh, it's like, how much faster? It's like what, five times faster than a normal SATA SSD, and about, uh, let's do some maths here. 24 times faster than a hard drive. 24 times faster. That is ridiculous. Um, anyone's asking how do you submit the build or something like that? Just send me an email. There's an email in the description below. Just send me this and then I'll see if I can check that out. Uh, Phil Daly, uh, this is my build, but I missed the start and CPU. Is there a cooler required or recommended? Yes, sorry, Phil. Thanks for reminding me. So this 5600X actually comes with a cooler, but um, it's not necessary to get a cooler because, do, uh, look, that comes with this cooler, but it's most likely going to run a little bit hot. If you're doing a lot of exporting and things like that, it might run hot. But if you have good thermals for your PC, you know, like good fans on this, this would be this would be fine. Now, uh, if you want to get an extra cooler, like to make yourself safe, I've got some budget options over here. If you look in the description below, you'll see CPU cooler over there. And there's budget, better and beast, like three options. Uh, I personally uh, am a fan of Noctua coolers. And that's because I've just... I don't see a reason why you should go with a, an AIO or liquid cooler because it's just, it's just, okay, it looks better maybe, but I don't think it performs better and it's more reliable. So three options over here. This is the budget option. This is Cooler Master Hyper 212. 
this will be a better option over here for you cheap very cheap uh, cpu cooler you can use that it's very famous a lot of people are using it it's going to be all right right if you want a little bit of an upgrade uh, you can go with Noctua NHU14S, which is going to be quiet as well because this is a 140mm fan on there. I know it looks brown, but Noctua is like the best coolers in the world. And I'm not saying this lightly. You can see some like bigger YouTubers have tested that the Noctua coolers versus liquid coolers, and they are unbelievable. They perform fantastically, and there's nothing that can go wrong. You're, if your fan is not spinning, you know that this is something wrong. If you're, something goes wrong with an AIO, like pumps not spinning or liquids a bit low or something, you'll never know because, you know, it's that. That's fantastic. Or absolute overkill one over here. This is what I'm using. This is, whoa, a little bit expensive here. I paid uh, like 99 quid or 90 quid for this. Uh, it's a ridiculous power, power master beast blaster me master <laughs> cooler i'm running a 16 core ryzen processor over there and then if i'm uh, absolutely utilizing 100 percent of this it is like the temps are within 70 degrees and it's a fantastic uh, result but you can go with this or that one that will do a massive upgrade for you but you don't necessarily need one just see how the temps go and later on if you want to upgrade your processor I mean the the cooler then get this one because you already got the stock one just go with the stock one now uh, but, 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 but where are we next yes the the SSDs so this is how I would set it up first of all you get either this one or the uh, Sabrent rocket one um, I'll leave the links in the description as well if people want to check that out later on. I know I haven't, uh, I forgot to put the SSDs over here. I was kind of quickly set it up, but this is what I would go. Always drive on this one. Then your cache drive, you can now save a little bit and then get a 500 gigabyte SSD. Now, let me see what options do we have uh, over here. I wouldn't go with this Yukon more trust that now you can go with this one or the other option is let me see if there is team group dream group is like a little they don't come up on the search results but they are just fantastic drives and um, let me see if there is a 500 gigabyte one okay that's a little bit more expensive over here and so are these here i saw these on a sale before and they were really cheap but these are the ones that I'm using or what I have, but they're a little bit more expensive. So at the moment, if you're buying one, definitely go with this one. This is great value for your money, uh, SSD for project cache disks. And uh, now the for your actual hard drive storage, this is a good option over here. You've chosen well. This is a 7200 RPM, which is a little bit faster than 56. Um, so it's, it's a great drive, compute drive. It's fantastic, nothing wrong about that. Now, let's have a look at this case. Now, this case has a little bit of a... Now, I've used this case, to be honest, I can't remember now if it comes with a fan in the front or not. No, it only comes one exhaust fan. <gasps> Pardon me. And that is the problem. So, this is quite an all right there is not that big of an airflow from the front but if you're wondering what case i would get to get the better optimal performance because you want a good airflow on your pc case because if there is cool air coming in then all the component inside stay cool which means your computer is just going to perform more stable and just performance is going to be there all the time um Crucial SSDs, uh, this is Ganesh is saying the crucial SSDs are a good option as well. Uh, just have a look which one is the cheapest. I think uh, WD or Crucial, well, Crucial, see if you have got find the Crucial M.2 drive that is 3.0 drive. You can use that one as well, but these just like what I'm using, I know they're solid. Uh, very good bang for buck performance compared to like Samsung or something like that. Then just add like loads of money on top over here. But in terms of the case, Here's two cases that I would recommend that are absolutely fantastic. Well, let's start with this one. Now, I'd like to do a build on this because this just is pretty cool looking case. Like, you've got RGB from the front, three friends from the front, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 
three fans uh, included, which means you're going to get massive airflow from the front. It's very, very good. Um, and because you've got positive um, pressure airflow, it means that your system's going to stay clean as well. So if you're going to pull the air from the front and then push it in over here and then exhaust it out from the back, or actually it just gets exhausted from wherever, it means that all the dust or whatever is inside is gets pushed out from there. If there's more exhaust in the case, then your system might get a bit more dusty because then it just starts sucking in air from other places or other gaps, uh, which is not good. So this is like very good airflow. You get three fans with it. Look, looks fancy, uh, you know, that's good. Let me see from the top over here. You don't have a USB-C port on the top, but that's all right. Your motherboard, by the way, that which shows over here, supports USB-C as well. As you can see, this port over here is for the front panel USB-C, which if you choose a case for this, it actually, um, you know, supports that as well. So where are we? Uh, yeah, this RGB case, fantastic case. Look at that, it's beautiful. Glass on the side as well. Another option is this Corsair Airflow, which is 20 quid cheaper and a little bit more expensive than this uh, case, Fantex Eclipse P300. Uh, but you get three fans included with it and you've got a mesh front all the way down, which means cool air coming in, and then coming out from the back. It looks all black, it's fantastic. I've done one build on this, I've got uh, on a white case, so if you wanna see that, uh, check this out. It's like a um, case for, so PC for the price of Mac wheels. If you type that on YouTube, you'll see uh, one of these over there. Two USB 3.0 panels on the front. You've got mesh on the top, mesh on the side, three fans, like just, really good bang for the buck case in terms of the performance of the case and looks not too bad either you know so that's what case i would go for this is an all right case as well nothing bad with this but it's just because it only has one exhaust fan from the back i don't know i wouldn't i wouldn't go with it if you know what i mean i've done a build on this one as well but that's what i would recommend now um Let's have a look. What is the last one? Okay, power supply. Now, um, these fa uh, okay, yeah, power supply. <laughs> Let's go power supply. Getting a bit off the track over here. Lian Li Lancool 2 is an awesome mesh case. Yes, but I bet you this much that this is going to be more expensive than our Corsair case over here. Let's have a look. How much does this cost? Lian Li Land Cool 2, tempered case. Let's have a look. Shopping. Yeah, look at that. 90 quid. So we're paying extra like 30 quid, something like that. Um, it's a cool case, but. Okay, what do you get anymore here? No, nothing. Is that USB C point? Travel here. For the bang for buck, I would still go with um, that Corsair case because it just is much uh, much more better bang for buck. So for the power supply, the thing is 750 watt is a little bit of an overkill over there. If you want a few to prove yourself, you can get that. But to pay 104 quid for this, I personally think you don't want to spend that money over there because it gives you zero performance and it's you shouldn't go with that. Now... I've got some PCUs uh, in the links in the description as well. I'm going to pick that them up so you can see them as well. I would go with a 650 watt because even if you get like, a GPU, which we're going to get to in a moment, like the 3060 Ti, then this is a fine CPU to go with. And uh, it's enough power to power everything. Semi-modular because, you know, if you... You're going to use those cables anyway, so why do you not want your, let's see which cable is this, yeah, 24 pin and then maybe CPU is on this as well. So you're going to use those cables anyway, might as well have them plugged in and pay less for the power supply. So no problem going with this one and look, we're saving around 21 quid, is it? No, 25 quid, so it's definitely worth that. The other option is to go with Rokosa 650, it's a few quid more expensive, fully modular if you want that, but... I don't see why you should go with that because, you know, it's it's fine. Uh, although the Corsair one is uh, 80 plus gold certified, so it is 
probably a little bit more power efficient so eventually we'll pay that like pay it back because of the electricity bill and things like that so 82 versus 79 actually 80 so we're only only three pounds more expensive so depends what you want to go for save this money here or now this is this is that i would go with corsair actually now thinking about it because it's uh, 80 plus gold uh, certified so that's that but you can save a little bit more by going with with this one let me see if this is any cheaper i doubt it nope yeah in fact if you're getting anything less than 3060 ti and not upgrade options because he mentioned he wants a lot of upgrade options as well or to be safe of upgrade in the future then that's why i'm recommending 650 if you do like a current build and this gpus i'm actually recommending in a moment then you might be even five for 500 watts so if you want to go for 500 watt pcu psu sorry then look at this one evga 45 quid uh, i wouldn't go with aero call or anything like that because you want to go your pcu with either evga uh, csonic or corsair someone who actually knows like these power supplies i would never get them because you just you're just gonna have problems you know um i just don't trust them don't trust them itch your ear actually itch your ear so these are the power supplies now the reason i'm recommending the 650 is if because now we're gonna go into the gpu as you can see he doesn't have a gpu over here and all the gpus are out of stock right now so if i go to uh nvidia and gpu then look at that like almost nothing is in in stock so which gpu should you go for because he is uh, a photographer and he's using adobe products and he mentioned that he wants to do some editing on premiere pro and then maybe use some after effects later then 100 percent use any um M nvidia graphics cards because they just perform better on those programs it is much much better <laughs> no my barber is saying do you have any 3080 visions for sale no but uh i've got an exciting build coming up for uh that person over there he knows this he knows what the specs are this is like the build that everyone is looking for this year stay tuned all the parts are over there waiting to be built just haven't got around to it yet i'll probably start the build next week this is going to be unbelievable back to his build back to the gpu which gpu should you get so nvidia gpu now because there is no nvidia 3060 in stock you can either wait just put like you know every day check on scan overclockers or if you're in the us look for your um, new egg best buy whichever sites there are micro center all of these just keep looking every single day if one comes stock you can just buy them by the way i have seen some 3070s and 3090s stock in the uk and i was like oh, they're just in stock 10 plus stock and then a few hours they're all gone but i thought i wish i bought them because you know just so i could build some stuff for people but this is what i would do I would if you can wait you can wait for to get a 3060 ti now as a photographer there is no point of going any bigger there's no point of getting 3070 3080 3090 it's ridiculous these adobe programs like lightroom and photoshop basically you need any any gpu anything that just you know drives your monitors you'll be absolutely fine so until then what can you do if you can't get a 3060 ti or 3060 whichever is cheaper just go with that that is fantastic if you have uh any money or anything just go f amazon right that's what i left in the description below and then just have a look at uh whatever gpu in the stock and just get the cheapest one just to get you going for now right so we have this one over here, NVIDIA GeForce GT uh, 710, 43 quid. Let's see if we can find anything cheaper. Quadro, now there's, there's absolutely no point of getting this one. It's ridiculous. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, GT 1030, 102 quid. You're kind of wasting money because when you get an upgrade, you're just going to throw that away anyway and just sell it. Is there anything else? There's 36 quid. Look, look at that, even cheaper than 43. 36 asus card i know this has only 
to oh, HDMI so you could drive your monitor VGA HDMI display um sorry DVI port uh, let's see any other ones in stock here right now basically just see any graphics card that is in stock what is this GTX 980 you joking right 400 quid this is absolutely mental people are just scalping as anything there's another 1030 for a little bit less just get any Nvidia card that is just in stock and just is all right for now I think this is probably the best bet for now get this 36 quid even if you don't need it later look you're not saving or not spending a lot of money uh, for this one later on we want to get the 3060 Ti because it's like the lowest of the 30 uh, th or 3060 lowest of the 30 uh, cards you're going to see a massive improvement in Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects if you're using uh, some of the uh, GPU accelerated stuff for exporting especially then the GPU can do that but for now if you just need to get going to edit your photos your processor is going to do most of it and RAM is going to do with that so get this one the cheapest one 37 pounds free delivery arrives on tuesday there we go noah is saying looking forward to seeing that build yes it's going to be absolutely fantastic we have kavan said does msi has vram problems i don't know but this is what i would go for even if something is wrong with this look one gigabyte ah this is one gigabyte you might want to go for two gigabytes and spend an extra few quid. That was the um, MSI one, because this is one gigabyte DDR5 PCI card. Anyway, but it will be fine. It will drive your monitor. That's what you need. It'll be fine. Um, let's have a look. Okay, 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 okay. Multitasking, convenient multitasking. So there we go. That's the graphics card options I would go for. 3060, if you can wait for that, um, you should go with that. Now, the last thing is his fans. Now, you don't need those fans over here, so we can r rip them all off. Because if you go with one of those cases over here, where's our cases? Ah, oh, they've gone then these cases already have um, three fans over here, so you don't need any more. Either this one or the other one, they already have these fans. So let me get the this up, see if there is any other questions going, because we are actually done now. Whatever uh, I have left in the description, you can check them out, and hopefully now with this, after this video, he's able to save some money, have a better system faster system and more optimized for his workflow uh, phil that was for you hopefully this was helpful uh, feel free to check the links out in the description below or this is what i would be going for the 5600x is going to be really really good um so yeah because i'm gaming is yeah Saying right stuff over here. What about 3700X? 5600X? Let's have a look. Uh, B556 worth it or should money be better spent on an X570 bar? That's it from Mars. I would go for X570 already if you buy a B550E Strix. I just go for X570. Um, okay, no, yeah, I did that. Uh, let's have a look if there's any other questions. Should you be looking for overclocking your memory? Nah, not really. The p you should be overclocking your system at all. If you're doing work every single day on your PC and you want solid performance, then I would not overclock uh, your PC because it's just not worth it. If it crashes once and you're going to lose even half a day, even hours work, it's just not worth it, at least to me. It's not worth the extra few seconds or few seconds you get like a day. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, Phil, they're asking Phil, what type of photography do you do? Go check out Phil on Instagram. Where is his profile? I think if you scroll down into the beginning, you'll see that. Um, 
Okay, we get that. Mesh version. Oh, they said I looked at the wrong one. What about Corsair Crystal 680X? Oh, yeah. I can see that. Uh, I saw that PC over here. PC uh, 680X. Ah, do you mean that? Yeah, but it's really expensive uh, case. I don't know why would you go with that ex case because it's just so expensive. So definitely not worth it to me. Uh, does it have enough airflow? Yeah, this actually. Is it glass front or is it mesh front? No, it's mesh front. Actually, there's glass in there as well. Ooh, probably not ideal, I'd say. It just comes from the side. It's all right, but I think for that price, I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't go with that. Um, there's no more barber. Miguel over there. Do, do, do. Does motherboard has VR, VRM problems? I don't think so. 8K footage or... 9k photos no one is game what is the best graphics card for working with 8k footage or 9k photos um, now if you're doing photos it's nothing to do with graphics card it's all with the processor if you're doing video editing depends on your program most likely it can be bottlenecked with your cpu as well but i would go with 3080 that's like the best bang for buck type right now once the 3080 ti comes out then i would recommend that one with more vram so if you're using davinci resolve then it, this would be better because you just have more VRAM to use uh, instead of just 8 gigabytes. Um, but if you're doing like in Adobe Premiere, for example, then 8 gigabytes is per perfectly fine. If you want to go all out, then 3090 is the way to go. There we go. If you want to know which GPU is the best one for video editing Adobe Premiere and um, DaVinci Resolve, then check out the video in the description. No, in, not in, in my channel, in my channel, not in the description. I forgot to put it there. Um, okay, Lin Lee too fun with 20 series or even a 1660 super. No, the gaming, the Kaz gaming room is saying you don't really need a 3000 series card, you can easily find you can be fine, you'll be fine with a 2000 series or even 1660 super. Now, the reason why I'm only recommending the 3000 cards is because I know they don't produce 20 series graphics cards anymore Which means that if they're out of stock right now, it's not likely that they're gonna be stuck later. You can buy them second hand That's maybe fine, but They're just not in stock anymore. I know that the 1050 Ti that uh, Imran is saying over there that might be in stock soon or there might be some like reselling or re producing it or something like that so that's fine as well it's an all right card but i personally what you're paying it's it can go for like 200 quid right now i don't think it's worth it i'd personally just get the cheapest one and just wait for some kind of card that it's a bit better but yeah 16 cards are better very good as well i'm just not 100 percent sure if they have stopped uh, producing them or not if they have then you know you might not be able to find them because they're really expensive at the moment Okay, I'm going to end this video over there. Um, so I just want to say thank you everybody for watching. If you're just tuning in, check the links out in the description below. Uh, you'll find um, all the links that I'm talking about. Feel free to, you know, scroll back and then watch it over there later. And you'll see everything, what we did and talked about all the different parts. But hopefully you can see how you can get a better system for your photography system. What would be the best budget build I would go for and what you know, save money and get a better system. That's uh, all I'm about to help you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to end this live stream now.